Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. The Sekiwake are all contending for both the Yusho and Ozeki status, so we gotta cover these matches. Here we got Daisho and Wakamoto Haru. If you know anything about Daisho, it won't surprise you to learn most of their matches are pretty short. The series between them is tied 3-3 though, and covers every Basho from last July till now, so we're gonna see all of them. Let's dig in. Clunk. Ow. Daesho's got the pushing game, and immediately his hands are inside, ready to shove. He's got that left arm pushing and the right forearm forcing Waka off him, but Waka leans in hard to keep from going anywhere. Daesho retracts his right arm, but with his style, it's necessary to keep maximum pressure on the opponent. He can't just pull back completely. So his left arm stays outstretched, and Waka's got the right defensive idea, getting his right hand just above the elbow in perfect parrying position. Pop! Now he's got Daisho turned completely sideways, which is exactly how you want to handle this type of wrestler. Daisho tries to recover, but Waka's on him like a face hugger before he can come close to setting his feet. Waka pops Daisho a few times to get him to the hay, and Daisho looks completely screwed. His hands have almost no contact with Waka, and he's getting lit up. It looks like one good pull down will finish things, but it's easy to see that on a paused frame. Instead, Waka's instincts take over, digging in to finish the push. But Daesho's got a pretty good plan B, using his brace on the rope to hold Waka off long enough to twist and shove him down. Waka ran this whole fight until the end, and he didn't really even make a mistake that cost him the fight. If you know chess or watch chess online, sometimes there are moves which are okay, not a mistake but not the absolute best strategy, and a great player can still punish that choice. Daesho did that to Waka's final push here. This time, Daisho wasn't screwing around with the forearm shove. He gets both arms extended to win the initiative. Pop, pop. That's Daisho's calling card, the big thrusting shots. Of course, once he gets going, he doesn't stop, which makes him difficult for most guys to handle, but predictable for those who can. Waka, looking like the latter, sees the left hand coming and parries it on the way in. Unlike the last fight, where he was able to parry out of a static position and turn Daisho sideways, this time he does it while Daisho has forward momentum. This means Daisho can recover by barreling into Waka much more easily. In case it looks like an odd decision for Daisho to essentially leap at Waka here rather than recover his footing and control him out, look at Waka's right hand on his left arm. Waka's got a side push already going towards the outside of the ring, and if Daisho tries to stop, he's likely to just get turned and lose control rather than regain it. So, in time-honored sumo tradition, he goes for the dive push to finish things while he has maximum momentum. The Gyoji calls it for Waka, which was confirmed in a mono E. His heel just managed to stay on the rope and not touch the sand outside before Daesho hit the deck. As we commonly see in these breakdowns, if a guy tries something and it works well, he's gonna go back to it. In this case, Daesho goes back to getting his arms extended on the Tachiai. He lost the last fight, but not because of the Tachiai, so it makes sense to give this another go. There's a couple things different going on after the initial contact, though. First, Waka's obviously been practicing how to stand more firmly against this type of attack. Second, though, is how Daisho doesn't keep his arms out this time. He gets the Tachiai push, swings his left arm around, then double hand pushes and disconnects. He may want to keep pounding opponents with strikes normally, but Waka's landed good parries in both of their fights so far, and this is a switch which limits his vulnerability to that tactic. It looks like a good strategy here. He got another big push in and now steps in to light up Waka again, and although we can see Waka trying to get Daisho pushed to the side, he hasn't come close to landing a parry yet. But notice how his feet are moving to his right. Now he lands a parry and gets around Daisho, but this was set up by Waka's lateral footwork rather than Daisho getting sloppy. Daisho had slightly too much momentum to follow Waka's move. Now Waka's got a side position, but Daisho is still the aggressor and has an angle on a push to the rope. Now Daesho's style gets him in trouble. He dives back in for Waka's face, but Waka slips the jab cleaner than Floyd and parries the arm away. Daesho pulls his hand in and balls up to at least keep from being overextended, but Waka keeps pushing and gets all the way behind him. It's remarkable that Daesho even gets turned around here, but that's still the ball game. The double big push still hasn't failed Daesho, so it stays in the game plan. This time, though, he pushes with the left, pulls it back, then pushes again, which is another anti-parry strategy. 
Waka is standing his ground though, and here in the blur of arms, we see Waka go for another parry, but Daesho gets his arm out of there before it can betray him. And now, somewhat incredibly, Daesho opts into a belt fight. I'm not saying he can't do this, just that it's not exactly his go-to strategy, and we can see his relative lack of practice with it. He lets go with his left hand without Waka really forcing him to, and then, as much as Daesho tries to keep his weight forward, Waka walks him around the ring while he slaps around looking for the belt again. Daesho does a good job burying his weight forward though, and being hard to move, and we see here he did manage to reattach his left hand to the belt. But Waka shows his superior grappling experience, getting his hips down and his weight on Daesho's left arm to instantly break the grip. He then uses Daesho's unsteady feet against him to get an immediate drive to the rope. Daesho has one play left, pulling up on Waka's left side to get him off balance. Somehow it works, and he's able to just stay in while moving laterally until he's able to shove Waka to the ground. At this point, their series is 2-2, but Waka has had clearly winning positions in both fights that he lost. Not much to say here. Daesho gets the same big starting push, but holds his left arm out there too long, and he's going so hard that it only takes a decent shoulder push and a sidestep to send him on his face. It's pretty much how they draw it up in the Oshi Defense playbook. Daesho goes back to the one-handed push and one forearm shove on the Tachiai. He extends his left arm to the opposite side this time, then strikes twice and leaves the left hand up so the right can join it in pushing. He has Waka going back, but you can see Waka's fingers hovering next to Daesho's left arm. Parry coming right? Yes, but we see Daesho figured out a way to brace his hand more securely on Waka's face, making it harder to pry him loose. And then Daesho just... Let's go. At full speed, it looks like Waka stumbles somewhat randomly, but this is really a case where Waka's weight was heavily using Daesho's push as support, and then Daesho yanked that support away. It's an unusual strategy because of what we see here. Waka staggered all the way across the ring, but because Daesho just let him go, he was able to recover his footing and set up a defense against his onrushing opponent. Daesho's left arm is out, and Waka's already swinging at it. In this case, it just serves as a deflection to give him more space to keep moving. Waka dances to the side like Ali, but Daesho is able to turn and continue pursuit. Daesho finally gets to square Waka up and hit with both hands at once, and unfortunately for Waka, he swings his arms up to defend rather than from the side. This plays directly into how Daesho creates momentum on his strikes, so it ends up not being much defense at all. This is the strike that really ends the fight. Dead center on Waka's chest, and watch how he bounces. Waka's done great things in this matchup, but standing on one foot in this position against a Daesho in locomotive mode? Yeah, that's how that story ends. So, even though this series is 3-3, a more detailed breakdown shows Wakamoto Haru has very much had the overall advantage. Until the last fight, Waka's worst performance was without question in their second match, and he won that by last-ditch pulldown. That suggests Waka's at least a slight favorite, possibly more. But we can also see that Daesho is willing to keep trying new tactics. While it makes sense that Waka doesn't change things up much against the guy he's largely been quite strong against, the tactical battle means more at the higher ranks. As long as Daesho keeps coming into these fights with approaches that deny Waka the parries he's used to such good effect, he's at least 50-50 to win. This is a fight that's very difficult to predict beforehand, but probably becomes much easier once it starts. Alright, that'll do it for this breakdown. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.